Hey, Tice, pretty big Thursday night football game here uh, we've got going on. Bengals at Ravens. Uh, we've got a six and a half point favorite in, in the Baltimore Ravens. Got a 53 beefy over under. Two defenses that struggle, honestly, at this point, and two offenses that are very good. So what are we looking at in this game? Oh, boy. So, yeah, Ravens defense is it can is good against the run, but they are getting gashed in the passing game. You know, also just getting gashed in the passing game. The Bengals defense and also the Bengals defense struggles against the run. I was going to say, they're but, getting gashed in the everything game, yeah, but so, still. <laughs> at least the Ravens have a little something to rely on. Uh, I'll just start and shoot. This might be just how the Justin Jefferson thinking was last week. But Derrick Henry's over-unders at 89 and a half yards. I'm hitting the over. I don't think that's high enough. I think he's in triple digits in this game. Um, it's up to ninety. The, it's up to ninety three and a half right now on bet. Oh, it MGM, is though. okay. My old <laughs> side here. Actually, it's a, oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hold on. We gotta get a uh, gotta get the proper you website that, on here. Re- yeah, here we go. Hit that refresh, pal. Yeah, yeah. So I, no, that's because I had a a non sponsored site as the one that came up. Uh, yeah, uh, but no. Out, so <laughs> wherever it's at, I'm taking the over. This is a terrible run defense. Yes. Um, uh, 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 Lou Anarumo, the defense coordinator, will come up with some cool game plan stuff. It's a short week. They, it's a divisional opponent, so they do have reps against it. This is this is kind of an own its own animal uh, a little bit with this Ravens attack this year. I just don't think they have the horses. I think the Ravens are going to commit to it because they always do. And this is where you see one of those second half Henry gets really rolling on there. So that's more. I, I, I it's not very original. But it's one that I'm looking at completely because I just think the matchup makes sense and the player makes sense. So starting there, uh, but also on the other end, because I actually think the Bengals are going to be very nickel dimey and hoping to pop one um, as far as passing the ball. I don't think Chase Brown gets like he'll get his touches, but he's not going to pop any. This Ravens defense has a lot of explosive runs. So actually, I was going to look at under. Chase Brown so was rushing I. yards. I have, Were yep, you? Okay. I have that one too. Yeah. So starting with the running backs, those might be bets. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. The 58 and a half. Yeah. All right. That's I'm going under there. Not that I don't think he'll be efficient, but I think it's more of like a 11 carries, 48 yards kind of game where none of them really pop, all go for four or five yards. That's the design of the Bengals offense. That's how I kind of picture it going against this Ravens defense. Yeah. And, you know, they just brought in Khalil Herbert, but they've, they've said like he might play in this game um so <laughs> off the plane with the wow, typical, shoot, they need him off the street is usually the line that's gonna be off the plane jesus <laughs> yeah literally so i mean he might he might play in this game um and you know that that could even just still limit potentially chase brown opportunities right? here so yeah again under 58 and a half rushing yards i think for chase brown makes sense it's tough in the passing game for both teams again we're big game hunting I thought about Jamar Chase overs uh, because it's just we don't know. T, I mean, T. Higgins is probably not going to play in this game. Um, man, people have bet the over on Deontay Johnson, 20 and a half receiving yards down to minus 140. I'm almost tempted to do the under on that one um, just because like he barely played last week. I know. And and also personnel usage like they're they're going to be with a lot of one or two receiver sets, you know, so that's not going to put Johnson Johnson even will. All right, are you going to beat out Rashad and Zay Flowers right away, or are we going to ease you into three receiver sets? You know, so I, I haven't looked at what the base nickel splits are for the Bengals, but that uh, they they haven't defended anything well. <laughs> so yeah, I was so say, just do you really, do you really need to? There. I know it's like everyone every way I parse it, and I've been trying to get, find angles for it. We're like, well, if they they did this really well, and it's like, no, they're just poor in everything they defend right now. So actually, I was looking at Rashad Bateman over twenty nine. Yeah, well, I think it's twenty nine and a half right now. Yes, 29 and a half. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh man, who, who, where could we go wrong betting on our guy? Rashad I know, Bateman? right? Uh, but yeah, I like over 29 and a half for him. Uh, you just look at the route participation last week. Uh, you got to go a while to get to Deontay Johnson. Rashad Bateman leads the team 81.8%. Uh, Zay Flowers, 72.7%. Mark Andrews, 50%. Justice Hill, 50%. Nelson Aguilar, 49.9%. Uh, 40.9%, excuse me. Uh, Derrick Henry, 31.8%. Deontay Johnson, 27.3%. Seventh on the team, like tied with tied with Isaiah Likely. Uh, so, I mean, do, do Derrick Henry's running more routes than you. You're not playing a lot. And this is still a short week. So I know he's been and he'll now be with the team about right. 10, you know, 10, 10 ish days at this point. But yeah, it's like it's only a, a short week. So I could I actually think if we do bet the Bateman over, we also should combine it with Deontay under like that. Uh, 20 and a half, which is plus money, plus 105. Like I said, the over on Deontay is 140. And I kind of I mean, listen, if Deontay Johnson 
stabs me in the heart, that's fine. Yeah, I still I like the player, but that does feel a little bit like a sucker bet. Minus 140, 20 and a half yeah. just cuz like, oh, he's a name. They just traded for him. Bengals defense yeah. stinks. I recognize yeah. that they traded for him. <laughs> bet the over on it. <laughs> do you yeah, have- I, I like Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, do you have Jamar Chase longest reception on there? For uh, I, my I, doesn't have a- I hate the longest reception bets, but it is 25 and a half yards. Just because the Ravens defense I know, is, I know. gives up a lot of explosives and they don't tackle well. So that's that's the only reason I'm looking at that one. If I were the to only go. the only thing that freaks me out about the Chase longest. Rece- number one, I, I like have just a weird block with longest receptions and i think this i think it's It's nothing more as hell (laughs) yes well one it's like you you might chase that thing all game long uh which hey it's something to root for something to watch but it does frustrate me when you see a guy get have like a big game like say say chase goes over 90 yards and hits the over on his receiving yards but he, it's just a bunch, it's like, like it's 18, nine for ninety or something 12, like that. Yeah, that annoys yeah. that annoys the hell out of me. And a lot of, of sports betting and wagering and fantasy, it's all just what can you live with. So I struggle with the longest reception one, uh, especially as somebody who lost a Nico Collins bet doing this earlier in the year. <laughs> uh, so maybe this is just a little bit of PTSD coming through. But you look at Chase the last two weeks, obviously without uh, T Higgins. In terms of like, it has been a lot of underneath stuff too. Five point two three yards uh, air yards per target. They've been trying to pepper him underneath and get yards after catch, and it just hasn't really happened. So, um, and a lot of it is because when he does go deep, it's been hard doubles because nobody's really scared of Yoshivas and uh, Gasecki and these guys, and Jermaine Burton can't show up on time, so he's not he's not out there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I'm a little conflicted about the about the chase stuff. Yeah. Oh man, what's gonna see? No, no, I, I, that's talk me out of it, because <laughs> that's uh, that it just for me, it's just watching this Ravens defense. I mean, shoot, even Bo Nix had a couple chances at it and missed them. Um, it's like no matter what the passing game is, everyone's been getting a chance, and that's another thing too, is that the running back, like Austin Eckler, had an explosive reception against this defense. Um, or is it a tight end? Is it Gasicki that they uh, you know target against them? The the linebacker, you know, Roquan Smith is taking a step back this year. Like just looks slower, especially in co- in coverage. Does that open up Gasicki? You know, so again, that's where I'm kind of with the Bengals side. It's like I do think they're going to get some action. I just don't know where to sprinkle it. <laughs> so that's where I, I'm struggling. I mean, shoot, Gasicki's at 50 and a half. No way. Like that, you know, it's like if that was lower, I'd be all over it. So maybe that's an under looking at it. But that just to me seems like uh, what about catches for Gasecki? Four and a half catches. I would be more um, more apt to look at because it just that makes a lot more sense. Maybe this is style of attack this week. Uh, yeah, it's just they're going to get quarters. And that's the thing, too, is like the Ravens are smart. Like, do they put Hamilton in certain spots? And so that's what's so hard. And it's a short week now. That's yeah. why short weeks are so tough too. <laughs> it's just like a lot of them, a lot of uh, just kind of like inside baseball is or inside football is that Thursday game plans are generally a carryover from what they did on Sunday. So you kind of keep 60% of that game plan and then maybe sprinkle in a couple plays. If you go against a divisional opponent, you kind of know maybe some of the things you can get to, especially if you're going against Luana Rumo for the 40th time um, or you know, repeating the Ravens system. So does that mean Gasicki gets those touches again? Because that was the plan of attack last week, which was supposed to be Burton, you know. So it, it, I know. So that's yeah. That's their game plan uh, hit it. a few wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. So like, is are they going to re wrench it because they got the Burton wrench thrown in there already? Yeah. So that that's why it's just hard to kind of pick on that. Even if I do think maybe it's Burrow is the bet. You know, maybe just like you know over completions for him or over yards for him. If you do want to sprinkle on that side, what is it? Oh, he's at twenty four and a half. That you know, again, that like actually feels a, a, a maybe a sprinkling over on twenty four and a half completions. Even if I hate usually completion bets, that's another bet. I, yeah. That's a bet I hate. <laughs> you know, well, about okay, it, so. but I like. I do think the. I think for one, let's let's narrow this down here. Yeah, I know. We're sorry, I just take, sprayed. We're definitely. Yeah, no, you're good. We're definitely doing Henry over ninety three and a half. Yes, we're definitely doing Chase Brown under uh, fifty eight and a half 50, rush yards. Yes. We are doing Rashad Bateman over 29 yes. and a half receiving yards and Deontay Johnson under 20 and a yes. half receiving yards at plus money, baby. Plus money. Okay. Uh, at least as we're talking about this right now on BetMGM, which is the site we're using. Uh, and so when I I have, I, let's take out the Jamar Chase thing. I kind of like your, bang, your Burrow completion one because a couple of things. 
they are trying to pepper Chase underneath right now. That's mm-hmm. been the case over the last two games without T. Higgins. You mentioned just rolling over the game plan from last week. Regardless of the Burrow stuff, that has been the case. Also, if you look at the Baltimore defense, they get gashed by everything, but they are fourth in terms of yards allowed to slot receivers so far this mm-hmm. year. You know they want to get Chase out of the slot. You know that Gusecki, and look, at the game plan last week, it ended up being – Mike Gusecki is taking 61.7 or 61.4 percent snaps from the slot the last two weeks. We've been trying to, yeah, (laughs) this is definitely what they want to do. But it's where they're at right now, and it's what they got to do. And again, he with all of that playing time, he has gotten a he's gotten a first down on 22.4, 22.5 percent of his routes. Like that, that's beefy for old 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 boy Mike Gusecki here. Or Mike G. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he's been targeted on uh, uh, he's 14.3%. Uh, t- oh, that's touchdowns, excuse me. Um, he's been targeted in an absurd amount of these routes so far, and they've gotten him out there. So, And I think that's going to be underneath stuff. So I like the Burrow completions, and I don't, I'll don't. i let you make a decision on Gasecki four and a half catches, but I actually don't know if I hate it. I'm shying away from it. All right, cool. I, I, um, yeah, shy away if from we that. can that, shy, if we can shy away from Mike Gusecki, that's fine. I, I'd rather bet on Burrow than Mike freaking Gusecki. Cool. <laughs> so the, I, I, man, yeah, yeah, the Burrow completions one, I'm like, actually, yeah, I like that one a lot. So that, that's where I'm gonna go with there rather than the Gusecki stuff. So yeah, I, yeah, I'm staying away from that. That's that's what's hard. It's just hard to parse, even if I think Burrow will be able to pepper him. Like I said, it's what you, it's what you can you live with. And uh, uh, you thank you for tying live. a bow at the end of what that our rambling, figuring this out on the fly pick section. <laughs> it's, like, it's been working. <laughs> so it I, has I, been I like, working. You get to hear our brainstorming as we come across the props that you like. Yeah. So when uh, Jamar Chase definitely has 120 yeah. yards receiving yeah, with a 30 yard catch, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 250 yarders. he has yeah, got yeah. five <laughs> catches and. Burrow somehow only completes 20 first. passes. We won't feel like idiots. <laughs> totally You're, won't feel like idiots. Yeah. Okay. Hey. So Burrow over t- over twenty four and a half completions, but do I, it. I like it. A- anything else from this game? Uh, not prop wise, just something to look out for. Oh no, I think it's gonna be a really fun game. I, I don't think uh, you got two really good offenses going at it against defenses that. But that's the thing; it's a divisional game. It's a short week, so that's what's always kind of cool. Like, or can be frustrating if you're trying to predict it. Is that it's truly a any given Sunday or any given Thursday type game because of just the circumstances of that. So I I'm very I'm very much looking forward to it because I think both offenses will have some cool moments. Um, but again, Thursday night divisional round. We're seeing if the Bengals divisional round divisional game. We're seeing if uh, the Bengals can kind of keep the good times going. You know, the, <laughs> to try and make or spot everybody a lead and still make the playoffs, I guess, is what their formula is and see if the Ra- the Ravens have a juggernaut on offense. So if they c- continue that or if Luana Rumo's got some surprises for him. So just, yeah, kind of what you heard from that whole rambling, meandering pick section for me is I'm pretty excited about this game because there's so many angles to attack. So am I. A lot of things to. A lot of things to watch here should be a pretty good one uh, could definitely be a hey how do you do in Thursday night football that's going to determine the rest of your fantasy week that is for sure